helps if I turn on my microphone. Hey everybody, how's it going today? It is Friday, uh, July 31st of 2020. <clears throat> Thanks so much for joining me. Um, I thought today would be an interesting day to talk about uh, just a video. I, you know, I'm just kind of looking at stuff to things to talk about. And I recently did a video on um, user stories and story pointing over on my main channel, as most of you guys probably know. Uh, so if you haven't checked that out, go over there now. It's programmingmadeeasy.com and go check out the the latest video I posted up there on. Um, user stories. It's really good, about an hour and a half long, where I just really kind of break down how to write user stories, what are some of the things you need to do with it, etc. Uh, and it got me really kind of on this agile thread. You know, you guys know I'm a big agile person. Um, and I just kind of thought, you know, I wonder, it's been a while since I've done one of these videos where I kind of like look at what somebody's presenting and talk about it and you know especially if it's a dissenting view i i kind of wanted to tackle it so uh i just went to youtube and typed in oh, what was it like agile fail right and looked for the first video that i thought was like something i might be able to do and i have not watched it i have not watched it at all uh uh, well, I shouldn't say that. I, I watched about the first two minutes of it, and that's it. I didn't watch the whole thing, right? So, um, I, I just just to kind of get a feel of whether or not it was something I was that was going to be a format I could probably work with. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of review now. First and foremost, I want to say this is not a hate video. Uh, I I appreciate dissenting opinions. I appreciate somebody who is willing to put their neck out there on the line and say, I disagree with the mainstream, I disagree with the general uh, consensus out there about Agile. And uh, so I, I applaud anybody's effort to try to kind of rationalize a coherent argument against kind of the prevailing uh, thought, right? The, the way that things kind of currently are or the way that most teams work. So again, I appreciate the what this guy has to say, even though I have no idea what it is that he's going to say. Uh, but we're going to kind of watch it. And as I'm watching it, I'm going to do kind of a reaction video. I'm going to kind of give you my input and my thoughts on, on what maybe some of his objections are. So you guys are going to see this kind of raw. You're going to see it uh, as I watch it and as I think about things and I want to talk about it. So I just kind of thought I'd do this kind of video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me go ahead and do my little transition here, shall we? Okay, so uh, yeah, that's one of my transition videos. That's right for this one. Yeah, that's my transition video. Uh, okay, so this video is titled Why Agile Development is a Waste of Time and Money for Companies. Um, so this seems like a pretty good candidate, right? Um, it seems like he's got, okay, so his, his original premise, at least the title of this is A Waste of Time and Money for Companies. We'll, we'll see how he kind of formulates his argument around that. Let me also give props to the guy who it is. So it's this guy named Coding Phase, which, ooh, he has about the same number of subscribers as I do on my main channel. So, um, yeah, he's probably about as popular as I am. I'm looking at his screen here, and I see what looks like jQuery to me, right? That's some jQuery. That's interesting. That um, So he's clearly a JavaScript developer uh, working on a Mac, uh, that doesn't really tell us anything much except for he knows some legacy code. That's pretty good. Um, he's, this is, oh, by the way, this video was done in 2017, so it is a couple of years old. It's like three years old. Um, and he's going on about this October 4th article, uh, which I assume is probably in the same year, uh, from Hacker Noon, why Agile, why isn't Agile working? So he's kind of reviewing this article and, and I'm going to review him. How's that sound? You, tell me what you guys think of this format too. Like, if do you guys like this idea? I, I'm kind of curious if you guys like the idea of me just kind of tackling uh, something real time like this and doing a response video. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, let's play. Hey guys, it's your boy Joe back at it again, man. Codingface.com. Your boy is back and I done did it again, guys. All right, so today's topic is why isn't Agile working? Now, 
before we get into this article and you know what this guy talked about and a lot of the things that you see here which is a perfect chart you know this is perfect this could pretty much explain everything about agile it's waiting 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 okay some work waiting waiting some work waiting waiting work and then waiting 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 okay and then it gets done did you guys catch that so he thinks agile is about waiting 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 get a little bit of work done waiting 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 get a little work done waiting 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 and then deliver hmm already doesn't sound like he totally grasps uh agile and, and again maybe it's not him he's going off of this article so um kind of maybe maybe i should go to the article itself and kind of pontificate why this might be wrong um let's just read real quickly over what's in here too first if we look at the lead time the time from the when we dream up an idea until it reaches customers you'll notice that most of the time is spent waiting uh 15 flow efficiency is normal crazy right yet we focus on what's relatively visible the small amount of time spent actually doing the job the best companies hit 40 percent short story to go faster you need to address the waiting time i actually agree with that i agree with the waiting time the analysis if, if anybody's ever read mythical man month um it's a really great book you should read it sometime it, it kind of goes through a lot of the challenges of organizing a project and a lot of the things that are typically not accounted for um when you're trying to estimate time or estimate how how difficult a project is going to be uh, quite often things like communication are left out of that discussion. Like how long is it going to take for us to work amongst us? Like how, how are we going to communicate with one another? And also don't forget, like that book was written when there was no internet. There was no, like it was, uh, there was no internet. There was no email. There was none of that type of like online communication. It, it was either like you picked up the phone and talked to somebody or you wrote a, a letter uh, or you drove over to someone's office or flew out to their office if they're in another city. So, like, the way it's a lot of the things that he's talking about in that book are even more exaggerated in terms of communication because of the lack of tools that we have now in order to do that kind of communication. Uh, but this is still a fairly accurate thing in terms of the flow efficiency. And actually, Kent Beck talks about this um, where you have you need to find where the bottlenecks are in your process and wherever those bottlenecks are you need to determine some sort of solution to to either fix the problem or to get around it to divert around it so um yeah uh, okay i'm i'm i should probably stop i let, let this guy continue and, and hear some of his objections all right if you guys don't know what agile is it's a way it's like it's like a paradigm so I don't even know what's the right word for it. It's more like a way that people uh, do projects. And some I don't know who created this, but people think that this is the right way to do it in offices and in projects. And they're like, hey, let's do some sprints. Let's do this and that. And it's like, guys, every single company that I know that does Agile wastes so much time. Okay, I want to stop right there for just a second. So he's expressed that he doesn't know what Agile is. I, I, I believe him. Um, he doesn't know where it started. Again, I believe him. Uh, just a quick little refresher. Here is the Agile Manifesto. Of course, you can all go to agilemanifesto.org and take a look at it. And this is kind of one of... I, I This is almost always... Almost always, uh, I'm making a generality here, but this is almost always the first objection you hear or the main primary objection you hear about Agile is that it's a process or it's a paradigm. It's a, right, it's, it's not a process. It is a set of values and principles. That's, that probably bothers me more than anything else about any criticism that comes at Agile's way is like, okay, so... It's fine to assault, so, so uh, okay, let me start with, Kent Beck described in Extreme Programming three things, uh, values, principles, 
and practices, okay? And you start out with values. These are like the core beliefs. This is what we believe in. The principles then are some of the different like smaller granular things around the values that help us. It's kind of the bridge between practices and values. So we've got these values of things that we, we hold to be true, principles that we think are uh, business practice or business principles, if you will, uh, things that we want to adhere to in the business world that will facilitate, uh, that will make us stick to uh, our values. And you'll see that really it's just like an expansion of the values, kind of a little bit more granulation of the values. And Agile has the same thing. And then finally, there's practices, okay? And practices are the actual things that you do in the office in order to facilitate and, and to adhere to your principles and values. So you, what quite often happens is that people conflate the practices with the values and the principles. Agile itself does not say any specific practice. It doesn't tell you what to do. It tells you what are some of the things that you should uh, try to achieve, right? So individuals and interactions over process and tools. These are values. These are four basic values, right? Individuals and interactions over processes and tools. And one of the things that's always stressed is what's on the left is just seen as more valuable than what's on the right. It doesn't mean that what's on the right is not important. It's just that we value the things on the left more. So individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Doesn't mean you get rid of processes and tools, but it means that you emphasize the team values, values the individuals and interactions more than they value processes and tools. And the same thing with working software over comprehensive documentation. We value working software more than we value the documentation being perfect, right? Uh, we value customer collaboration more than we value contract negotiation. Again, this doesn't mean that you don't do a contract. It just means we value these things more than the other thing. And then finally, responding to change over following a plan, right? These are the four values that Agile starts out with. And then we have the 12 principles. And the principles, I'm not going to go through all of these, but these are basically expanding on the values, but they're abstract. They are not practices. So deliver working software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with a preference to the shorter time scale. These are principles. These are things that we would like to achieve. They're not a way of doing things. Now, a, an example of a practice would be paired programming or having sprints or, uh, you know, or doing test-driven development. Those are those are actual practices that you do to adhere to the principles and the values that you establish in in agile right so the the whenever i hear somebody say well the process the, the, these practices that we're doing are violating agile or, or i shouldn't say they're violating agile they're these practices that are supposedly agile uh, are broken okay that's for your situation, for your team, that very well could be true. They, but that doesn't mean your agile is broken. What that means is the practice that you're trying to achieve is not actually fulfilling the values and the principles that you said you wanted, right? It's it's a very different thing. Um, I, I could go into religion and stuff because there's a, there's kind of a good comparison there with, you know, you can have religious values, you can have uh, principles, uh, you can be a principled person in your your theology but the way that you practice what you actually do in your life those you know if, if you can want a value you can you can try to hold on to a value and you should theoretically be practicing your religion right you should be practicing those principles and values in some way the things that you actually manifest and do should adhere to those values and principles but that doesn't mean every single practice you do is adhering to the value and the principle and quite often, teams that say that they are agile are doing practices that are actually anti-agile, okay? Because agile is about adhering to the values. And if, if uh, four-week iterations don't work for your team, then don't do four-week iterations. Uh, if, if, um, if you're doing too many meetings, well, then don't do so many meetings, right? Find a way to get out of that. Do, whatever the practices are that are 
removing your ability to, to follow those values and principles, then you need to evaluate those practices and get rid of them. Throw them over the fence. Get, get done with it. Don't do it anymore, okay? Um, that's essentially what Agile teaches, is that if you see a practice that doesn't really benefit your values and principles, then try not to do that. That's what Agile stands for. So he's kind of arguing something else here. He's arguing, uh, again, that, you know, what is essentially the scrum methodology in a way uh, is interfering, which I, I don't totally disagree with. Okay. Let's watch more of what he has to say. Like, I'm not even lying to you guys. It's pretty much a waste of time because this is what happens. Let's say you have a website, right? You have to do a meeting for that website, right? To figure out what's the website about. Then from there, you do another meeting. to talk. Okay, hold on. So his complaint is that you have to hold a meeting with, with your customer in order to find out what they want. I don't... That, don't you have to do that regardless of methodology? I mean, don't you need to know what your customer wants? I'm just saying. Okay. Talk about what are the features that need to be added. Then you do another meeting. Send it out to the designers. The designers go in. They do their part. They go and send it back to everybody. Now there's another meeting for everybody to just look over at the design. Then they go back and forth. Send the... <laughs> Okay, so he's describing what I've seen many companies do in that they, they're trying to uh, collect all of the upfront requirements. And that is kind of explicitly anti-agile. Again, if we look at the principles and practices. Uh, so here we go. Deliver working software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with a preference to toward, towards shorter time scale. Um, let's see. I know there's one in here. Uh, I, was for, I, I can't ever remember. I don't have these memorized. Uh, but there's one in here about how, yeah, reflection, highest priority says for, through early. There we, oh, yeah, it's the first one. Our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. Early early deployment early con or early delivery of the pro of the, the project give them something to work off of as soon as possible is what he's describing sound like this and this is where a lot of companies this is the 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 problem companies that say that they are agile but then they don't adhere to the agile values and principles right we're, we're agile, but we're going to do all of our planning up front. That's not agile. So the problem is not with agile. The problem is with the business that is not doing agile, right? They're not doing it the right way. Okay. Anyway, let's, let's continue on. Send the design some information like, hey, change this, fix this. Comes back. There's more waiting. Now you got to wait for everybody else to be um, on time to basically work on this project and go over whatever the new designs goes through right and then from there you pass it down to the next person and be like, okay now we're gonna pass it to it and then it comes in and looks at uh, the designs and say hey this is what we can do this was this is what we can't do uh this is how long it's gonna take so now it's a waiting time then from there if you have other projects to do, you have to wait until those other projects get done. And then you jump to this new project. So there's like waiting and waiting and waiting, meetings and meetings and meeting. And it's like, man, sometimes, man, all these meetings take forever. Is it just me or is he describing waterfall? Sit around. So... I can only go this far and then I have to hand it over to this person. Then I, then they can only go this far and then I have to hand it over to this person. Then they, they go only this far. And, and in the meantime, you have to sit there and wait until each one of the different teams and work groups works. That's waterfall. Like that, that, that's waterfall. That's specifically the opposite of agile. And again, this, this is the, the problem with, um, a lot of people's perception about agile is that it, because it comes from companies that don't necessarily follow Agile properly, they get the wrong impression of what Agile actually means. 
And I'm almost willing to bet you at no time during this video does he actually pull up the Agile Manifesto or describe or discuss any of the values or principles of Agile. I almost guarantee you at no point will he actually uh, discuss what is in the Agile Manifesto. Okay. Uh, he'll probably just talk about the experiences or this article, which, you know, I don't know how this article, what this article is going to go into, but it's like, I, I kind of understand in a way, analyzing the effectiveness of something based upon the results of its implementation. I, be, I believe wholeheartedly in that. You, you implement something and you observe and you evaluate the effectiveness of that implementation. You should be doing that, okay? However, if you implement something that is the complete opposite of it and then claim that it is it, you're going to get a false impression. You're actually going to be proving the, the you know, if, if stuff, if it doesn't work, right? If you implement waterfall, it doesn't work. You're effectively proving what agile is trying to fix, right? Like, <laughs> but at the same time, you're blaming agile for the practices that are not actually agile. I, I don't know what else to say about that. So I guess we'll just keep going. We've had, uh, you know, in other companies that I work for before, um, we've had like third parties who are like, oh, yeah, man. <coughs> Sorry. We use Jira. We use this. We use this and that. And hold it. Be okay. This is another one of those things that really drives me insane. Uh well, we use this tool, we use that tool, we use Jira, right? We use a Kanban board. Mmm. Okay. Again, let's go back to the Agile Manifesto. Individuals and interactions, the value is individuals' interactions over process and tools. So if somebody is touting the tools that they are using, they are by definition not being agile tools can help you practices can help you be agile but one of the things that we're explicitly stating in the values is we value the individuals and in interactions more than we value the tools so if some third-party group says oh yeah we're agile we use jira that's that should be a red flag to you that that group thinks they're agile because they believe that a tool will deliver the agileness, right? And that is completely anti-agile. It's, it's mind-boggling how this warped view of agile has really come about because of people doing the exact opposite of agile and then claiming that they are doing it. It's uh, it's so frustrating for somebody like me who's you know died in the wool, love agile, love clean code. Like I'm a fanatic about this stuff. Uh, when I see this kind of misinformation being portrayed as agile, it just it gnaws at me, right? It just absolutely gnaws at me. All right, let's go back to the video because uh, you know we all want to hear more about what what this guy has to say. You know, our whole motto is agile. We do everything agile. And it's like, okay, cool. So things are going to get done in a fashion, you know, fashionable manner. Like, you know, it's like, okay, cool. By the end of the week, we're going to see some results. It's like, nah, it doesn't work like that. We have to do a meeting to do a meeting for a meeting. Like, that's how it is. <laughs> and then at the end, they'll do a little bit of work, something that could have taken a day. And then they come back and send it back to you. And you're like, wait, it took you two guys, like, you know, it was two guys. It took two guys to do this about two to three weeks, something that takes one day to get done. And All right, so here's another fairly common criticism, and I, and I kind of actually sympathize with this um, because there, if, if a team is not effectively working, um, if they're not effectively working together, then you're going to get this. 
And honestly, it has more to do with the fact that they are not, um, they're not lean, right? They're not evaluating their processes. So it, it is, uh, I, I had this with another team the other day where we were talking about how they're, they're seeing a slower progress, right? They're trying to implement these new practices like test-driven development and pair programming, uh, and it's slowing down their, their velocity. And especially when you're starting out doing some a, a new practice, it's almost always going to slow you down. I mean, there's very rare times where you implement some new practice and it speeds you up. Uh, typically, the more red tape you have, the slower you're going to go. So when you start to look at the practices, I, I, we started to evaluate as a team, what are you guys doing to overcome the problems that you have faster? Uh, for them, we, we kind of ran into their pairs would spend a lot of time trying to fix some sort of problem, right? So just the pair would encounter some sort of issue while they're, while they're you know, trying to resolve a story. And they'd run into some sort of roadblock. And then they would spend four or five, maybe even two days trying to fix a problem. And I know from my own personal experience that individuals run into the same thing, right? We do this all the time where I run into a problem and I will spend a lot of time trying to research the problem, trying to resolve the problem, etc. And I will hopefully solve the problem, but it's going to take me a long time. I would have gotten past that hurdle a lot faster if I had an expert, if I had a subject matter expert on my team about that issue that I could just bring in to help me work on that. So when you think about the way that the team organizes, what you should be trying to do is allow those subject matter experts to quickly uh, change what they're working on to work with the teams that need those subject matter experts for that particular point in time so that you can quickly overcome those hurdles. So this guy's saying, oh, well, you could have done that in just one day. Maybe you could have. You don't really know. You think maybe you could have. And there might have been a bunch of communication issues, and that is definitely a problem. There's a lot of communicating, like I've got to get what I need over to you. You've got to, you know, you've got to take a look at the code that I've got. You've got to try to figure out what is the in, what are the inputs and the outputs of what you want. And maybe you haven't effectively written a user story, so you've written out a bunch of technical tasks, and then they have to try to figure out how all these technical tasks line up. So yeah, there's that communication piece can cause what should be a half day to a day's worth of work to become a week long because the team is not effectively determining how to go about their working process, how to acquire requirements, how to uh, gain a, a, a hold of the code that they're gonna be working on, how to assess what the requirements of the code are, how to write tests perhaps for it. And then somewhere along the way, they might get hung up on some sort of technical glitch that they have to work feverishly in order to, to fix. And if you've only got one guy working on it and he runs into a problem, it's going to take him longer, longer to get over it. So uh, whereas somebody who's more familiar with the system might not have that same technical challenge and therefore to him, it's one person could have done this right away. The team needs to evaluate what the practices are that are causing them to slow down and try to find ways to resolve those things. That is an agile process. That is an agile thing. You should constantly be looking at ways to deliver working software on a quicker time scale. That is one of the goals, one of the values that we have. It's actually principle, right? Deliver consistent quality products quickly that deliver some sort of value. And what he's describing is essentially the opposite, right? Is it takes longer for this team to, to actually get it out. And from the fact that this team supposedly said, uh, oh yeah, we're agile because we use Jira. Mm, that's probably a red flag that they're also going to be very slow. That that they say that they're agile, but really they're probably not, and they're going to have a lot of deficiencies in the way that they work. So uh, it's it's partially a valid criticism again, um, because we see teams that say that they're agile, but they're they're not really. They're just using tools that make them appear agile, I guess. All right, let's move on like yeah but we need to get approval by this person we need to pass it to this person to approve it and then this other person goes in their qas and pass it to this other like again he's describing waterfall right 
that's gated. We're gating the process. That is waterfall. I'm not saying you don't have code reviews. I'm not saying you don't review uh, things that you merge in, but it should be like a part of the process that is quick and easy. You should have a CI CD pipeline, right? You should just be able to branch or to, to merge that branch right back into the trunk. That's what you should be able to do. But um, what he's describing is, okay, QA has got to check this out. It's got to pass all the code reviews. It's got to have another meeting around it, right? That's all gating. That's all waterfall. Hey guys, nothing gets done. That, that's why what, what you think a lot of companies have to hire so many developers most of these companies that are running agile they're they're basically hiring a whole bunch of developers because every feature takes forever to get done all right so um i haven't heard this one before this is new to me uh that agile companies have to hire a bunch of people because they are slower. Uh, again, going back to Mythical Man Month and uh, so kind of a, a fairly popular, well-known thing is that when you add more people to a project, you actually make it go slower. Uh, and that has a lot to do with, again, the communication, right? Getting that new person up to speed. You have to set aside somebody on the team to go get that new person caught up on where you are. And in doing so, you you take away from the velocity that the overall team can work towards, and that person has to spend time to get that other person up and running. Or that one person has to just kind of figure it all out on their own, not get any help or assistance from the team, and just kind of like explore until they eventually get it and just kind of ease their way in, but they're not going to be an effective team member for several months, right? Several, several months. Like it could take six months to a year before your return on investment of a developer is actually going to be uh, worthwhile for the team if you go that slow, if you just kind of let them go on their own. So uh, teams that are constantly trying to include more developers on a team because you know this is what happens with project management is uh we're going to miss our deadline unless we get more help and more resources on this right it's the the manufacturer's way of thinking about problems is well i just need more manpower i need the mythical man month right i need more man months to help cover uh the 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 amount of work that's necessary to get this job done on time and there's always this factor of communicating and onboarding of that person that is consistently looked over, right? They don't look at that as a problem in getting that person up. <clears throat> so what happens if, you know, so you, you, you spend, uh, I don't want to talk too much about this. You guys really should check out Mythical Man Month. It's a great book. Uh, you, But if you set aside some time with one of your developers to go train that new person, that detracts from that person's ability to continue to work on things. So now you're actually slowing down the velocity for a period of time until such time that the new person can get on. And yes, that person can start to work on it, but now you've gone back so far in your velocity and you start to evaluate. Most teams, they don't stop evaluating their velocity and they see the velocity tick down a little bit and they go, uh-oh, right? The project manager, uh-oh, we've, we've got a velocity change. Now we're even further behind. We need more resources. So they hire more people and then more people come on and each one of them has to be onboarded. And so you spend a bunch of time trying to onboard them. They have to get caught up, which of course drops the velocity down even more. And then of course the project project manager looks at it again after another month and bringing on three more people and they see the velocity drop even further. And they're going, what the heck, what's going on? We need to add more people. And you know, right, that's kind of the thing or we, we need to break these people apart and we need to evaluate this and we need to, like all of a sudden all hell breaks loose when really it was because you didn't, you were trying to project something that was um, not really, really based upon this, the state of your current business model, you were not able to match what you guys were projecting in the first place. And just adding more people does not actually solve the problem. Like this is a well-known fact. We Adding more people to the project does not fix the problem. So when he's saying, oh, well, you know, all these teams are having to hire more developers, again, that's not about agile. That's about ineffective 
management of software programs, software, te uh, software teams. That's really what that is. All right, let's hear more. Not because people can get it done right away, is because somebody is like, hey, we gotta do a meeting for this meeting. We need to do a meeting to get a meeting for the meeting. Like that's okay. A meeting for a meeting or a meeting to get a meeting for a meeting. Uh, okay. This is not exactly an invalid criticism. This is actually kind of, I wouldn't, again, it has nothing to do with agile. That's the problem. His arguments are about practices that certain teams are doing. Meetings are a practice. Understand meetings are a practice. They are not a value. They are not a principle. They are something that a team will do in order to facilitate. So if you have iteration planning meetings, right, which are very good because they allow you to go through the backlog of stories that you have and determine which ones are the most valuable and need to be done. That's perfectly legitimate. That's exactly what teams need to be doing in a meeting. And you need a meeting to do that kind of thing. Uh, so those are effective meetings. Well, I shouldn't say you need to. I, I, I back off on that. Um, most teams find that to be the most valuable way of going through their backlog and determining value. But again, the team needs to evaluate if that practice is actually effectively leading them towards their principles and their values. If you are doing meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting, then the team should be saying, we need to cut back on these meetings. We need to find more effective ways of conducting our meetings. And one of the things that we're constantly telling teams in, in my business uh, that I work with, right, Galvanize, is we're telling the, we're telling developers, if you are in a meeting that doesn't provide any immediate value or benefit to either the team or the customer um, by your, having your presence there, then leave, right? Don't be there. Don't, don't attend a meeting if it doesn't have any value. Um, and I think a lot of developers feel this like i have a meeting schedule i have to go to it right my, my boss will get mad if i don't go to the to the meeting well you got to kind of take it into your own hands and the team has to take it into their own hands and say look we are not going to attend meetings that are slowing down our ability to get the job done and if your team and this is a very common problem within businesses is that they have a lot of meetings that are not effectively doing any actual work or helping to uh, helping them develop products in a timely manner for the uh, for the uh, delivery to the to the client, right? You have to evaluate as a team what are the practices we're doing? Are they helping or are they hindering? And what can we do in order to fix those things? What is the bottleneck? If meetings are the bottleneck, you need to fix your meetings. Either do less of them and and figure out quicker ways of doing meetings, or just don't do them at all. Right? And find some other way of communicating. Period. That doesn't require a meeting. Okay. All right, let's continue on here. All you're going to see when it comes to Agile. Uh, working in an Agile environment is one of the worst things that could happen to any developer. And just for the simple fact that it's just a waste of time. There's a lot of things that you know you could get done right away, but it's like, it, it's like the office politic. Okay, if there's a lot of things that you know that you can get done right away, that means that you are not effectively communicating with your team exactly what it is that you that needs to be done, right? Okay, so one of the things that should be happening within a team is that it is trying to deliver value first and foremost. So as you're looking through your backlog, what is the most valuable thing that we can work on right now? Go do that. Just go do that. I mean, and, and if there's something stopping you from doing that, then don't do that. that. That's what Agile says. That's what Agile is about is if there is a practice, if there is something that's going on in the business that is not allowing you to deliver quick uh, iterations, you know, quick working valuable software, then stop doing that practice. If you're wasting time, stop wasting time and get to work. Go do it. No, Agile is not stopping you from doing it. You're stopping yourself from doing it. You're allowing something else, some sort of outside agency to stop you from doing the production, productive work that you could be doing. And Agile explicitly is saying, like it's explicitly saying, stop doing those things that are stopping you. 
we want like we value you should be trying to deliver fast or you should be trying to deliver valuable working software as quickly as possible to the developer that's that's what it's outright saying and here your argument is well they say that they're agile but we're slow in our delivery so therefore agile doesn't work again agile is just a set of values and principles you're you're like agile is not broken it's it's not a problem of agile being broken it's that you are your team is not effectively working and you're not implementing the values and principles of agile that's the problem right agile is not broken you're broken okay i'm going to say it abruptly you know as abruptly as i can agile is not broken because agile is just a set of values and principles it can't break you don't break values okay people break things values don't themselves break you can break the values you can break agile okay so agile is not broken you are broken agile that's the problem okay all right keep going it has to get passed down to this person for this person to approve it then this person needs to pass it to this other person to approve it then they pass it to another person to approve it and then once it gets to the top the person says, oh, no, I don't like this. So now everybody that's below that person has to start from the beginning and fix everything. And then everybody got to approve to approve the approval. Like, again, waterfall. He's describing waterfall. Gated pr uh, movement, right? Can only get this far, and then someone has to approve it. Then it's got to go this far, then approve it, then this far, then approve it. That's waterfall. S again, I, this guy does not know Agile. That's the problem. He does not understand what Agile is, and he's arguing about things that are not Agile and saying, this is why Agile is broken. It's <laughs> you can tell for somebody that's a fanatic of Agile like me who actually understands this stuff, uh, this is really annoying because it's total disinformation. It's complete lack of knowledge, and it's total disinformation. <laughs> like, it's one of the worst things in the world. Like... As a developer, man, you, you'd be like, sometimes, man, I could just get this. I totally agree. That is one of the most annoying things in the world. Waterfall is one of the most annoying processes in the world. I totally agree with that. You're describing waterfall. You're not describing agile. Done. We could get this done as soon as possible. It's like, wait, we actually need to do a meeting about this. You can't start coding. You can't come in and start coding, start working on something. We have a process right we have waterfalls we have springs we have you know the whole shebang is like he literally just said we have waterfalls <laughs> oh my god he literally just said we have waterfalls <laughs> you can't make this up can you he's arguing against agile because the agile the quote-unquote agile team said you can't do work because we have waterfalls <laughs> oh god you can't make this up <laughs> oh lordy Oh, let's, let's, okay. I think I'm going to end up laughing too much through the rest of this. Man, this is a waste of time, man. Like, can we just get some work done? You know what I mean? So right. This guy, he, he came in, gave you a couple of different little examples where <laughs> it was like, yo, other. Oh, yeah. Let's see one of these examples. SMNL. This is a fun trick. Plot the time to completion for your large, medium, and small work items. Try to move up a level and focus on items of actual customer values, not tasks. What you'll notice in many organizations is that the size of the work has no bearing on the time to completion. Why? There are too many other factors influencing how long it takes to complete the work. Right. Okay. Right. I, but um, Waterfall doesn't do any better. Right? There's, there's no other system that properly, like, if there was a system, if there was a working process that we could use right now that 
properly determined the amount of time it would take to complete tasks and features of a software application, we would all universally be doing it right now. If there was such a system in existence that every single thing that you did in a software development system could be time boxed perfectly, we'd all be doing it. We'd, we'd all be doing that thing right now. And uh, I mean, we've been doing software development, like software development has really been in existence since, right, uh, Turing, right, since the 40s. So what are we now, uh, 70 years, almost 70, or it's like 65 years into this. And many, we've had uh, some of the smartest people ever known to exist on our planet working on solving these kind of problems and the solution the best solution we've got currently is agile but you and this article writer are going to tell me that uh the best system that we currently have is actually terrible it's awful and that uh, we should all throw it out for what what are we going to throw it out for What's the alternative? What's the better solution? What's going to give us the perfect time scale? What's going to what's going to help us say we're going to deliver this software product exactly on this specific date with no flaws, no bugs, no problems, and it's going to be absolutely quality, perfect work? What's that system? Tell me. Go. I mean, there's millions of developers today working on software. We're all very, very bright individuals, very smart people, I think, right? Most of us anyway. Um, and there have been, again, 65 years of, or more actually, right? What, what, 60, the 75, yeah, it should be 75 years, I think, right? I can't do math today. Anyway, uh, six, no, it should be 65. 45, gosh, I can't do this. So 55, 60, yeah, so 65, yeah. So 65 years, we've been doing this, sto this software stuff. Some of the brightest minds in the world have been working on software and nobody has been able to come up with a system that solves this problem of when do you figure out exactly when something is going to be delivered and have it also have some quality, right? The best we've got is agile because agile is a set of values and principles that are laid out for the developer to advocate on their own behalf of what they think is the right way to do software development. Not process, not practices, but these are the values we hold as developers. These are the principles that we hold as developers. So again, Agile is not broken, okay? It's not that, you, that Agile is broken, it's that you are not practicing Agile. You are doing something else and claiming it to be Agile. All right, anyway. Moving on. The fact is, unplanned work, handoffs, <laughs> waiting, etc. And then it's like, again, read Mythical Man Month. Uh, it talks extensively about that thing, about all of the the handoffs, the communication issues, all of that stuff. Uh, tackled in Mythical Man Month. I wish I had the book with me at my desk right now, but I don't. You look at this pie, and it's like, okay, maybe twenty percent of the whole time was just to do work then everything else is just a waiting game all right so yeah man i mean is there a benefit to it sometimes very rarely but i doubt it I really is there value in doing agile is there value in having values is there value in having principles Okay. I've never seen a company that is getting anything done from it. You know, because there's another thing too. It's like sometimes, you know, let's say an example. Let me just say, uh, I have seen businesses. Uh, there are Fortune 500 companies that are working to get better at being agile, um, that are getting better at what they do. Um, and even companies that I haven't specifically explicitly worked for, there are plenty of teams that are like that, that that work in an agile fashion that uh, consistently deliver a good product. Uh, so just because you haven't worked at them doesn't mean they don't exist. Uh, it just means that the companies you worked for 
paid lip service to Agile, but probably aren't actually doing it, as we've as I've said many times already throughout this video. Let's say a a CEO or somebody who has power in the company says, you know what, man, we do not know anything about web development. We do not know anything about IT. Who do we call? Let's call a consultant. A consultant comes in, looks at the flow of the company and says, hey, I can save you guys money. If you guys give me, you know, $30,000 for this month, I could set up a whole system for you guys on how to deploy, how to test, how to do this, this and that. So the guy comes in, gets $30,000, puts a, a, a basically checks and balances for every single thing in the world. Like checks and balances are good, but checks and balances uh, can be abused too, right? It's a way to just basically put everything on hold. Nothing ever gets done because this all. I'm waiting on the agile part, just to let you know. I'm waiting for how this ties into agile. A consultant comes in and says, hey, I'll set up a process for you that's gonna save you money. Okay always something like oh this needs to get approved to get the approved to get an approval like <laughs> that's how it works like again not agile that's process that's kind of i wouldn't say anti-agile it's not the opposite of agile it's just that um it has nothing to do with agile it's process is not agile and it's kind of one of my problems with scrum is scrum is it uh, it's like um it's like a manager's version of Agile that does its best to get to Agile, but doesn't quite actually get there. There's a few things like, uh, I, I, I constantly make this comparison of like, uh, Scrum to me is the Norton antivirus of the computing world, right? It's, Scrum is better than nothing, okay? It's, it may not be the, the perfect Agile system, but at least it's something that's, approximating agile uh that it's it's an acceptable solution and i understand why it's so widely adopted is because it gives a lot of uh certification and and um appearance of knowledge and an appearance of process that management loves right they like having something with some sort of process in place that uh gives the illusion of control and the problem is it's it's a it's kind of a i wouldn't say it's a lightweight version of it it's just it it doesn't always adhere quite to what agile really says it should it just kind of capitalized upon the idea of agile and unfortunately a lot of businesses have kind of gone this way um all right let's go ahead and keep moving on like pretty much anybody who has done agile have working any company that's working with this paradigms and this whatever like freaking agile like i don't even know what's what's the the exact word for it agile methodology right like <laughs> like sometimes i'll be like man people come up with things that you know in reality you don't need in in web development you don't need agile like this, so many companies in again. Okay, so what do we need? But what what are we gonna replace it with? Waterfall, the thing that you actually hate. What what are we gonna replace it with? You know, like look at this company, uh, Atlassian, right? They make so much money. They, these are the people that sell the software for every company that has been sold in the idea of agile and all this extra bs i mean bitbucket is legit i, I use bitbucket source tree is legit but let's talk about jira man like so let's complain about the tool <laughs> let's complain about the tool which again agile manifesto we emphasize individuals and interactions over processes and tools. It's nice to have a tool, but the tool in and of itself does not make you agile, okay? It's just a, it's a tool, it's a practice. It's something you can include as part of your processes in order to hopefully, hopefully 
help you adhere to your values and principles as agile developers. But in and of itself, the tool does not make you agile. It never has, it never will. Okay? All right. It's like, I don't know, man. It's like a, <laughs> it's a freaking project management thing. Now they own Trello. Uh, let's see another one. Okay, I'm still waiting for the criticism though here. Like, okay, so they made some software to help you, to help you as a tool be agile. What's the, what, because they're making money off of that, that they, that's bad? I don't know what kind of argument that is, but okay, let's move on. You got Collaborate Chat Confluence. You got, oh. By the way, Scrum, hello, <laughs> right? Scrum is that, like, Let's capitalize on agile <laughs> to make money. I think there's something called hyper chat or something like that. Uh, funny chat, something like that. It's some funny, funny ass name um, that they have. Put conversations with stride and a new way to teams to talk, meet, decide, and to do is like, what? You charging people for this stuff? Like Google already gives this for free. You know what I mean? Like there's so many do? things here that. I'll be like, man, why are people paying for this? I mean, well, it's because Google like I told meetings? you guys, most of the CEOs, most of the owners, most of the people that are coming in, and VCs and people who are spending money and investing money into companies, they don't know anything about technology. They don't know anything about the process of programming. Somebody comes in and be like, hi, my name is, you know, Sean John, right? My name is Sean John. And, you know, I used to work for Google and, you know, in Google, we basically, uh, at some point, we use Agile, and I helped them set up Agile. So hire me for $30,000, and I'll get your company up. $30,000? That's, that's a drop in the bucket. <laughs> I don't know who he's talking about. Uh, if, if I was a consultant and I'm only making $30,000, uh, I'd, I'd, I don't know how I could live. <laughs> that's Okay. Uh, which makes me kind of doubt this experience that he's talking about. I, I have some serious concerns that he may be talking a little bit beyond his actual experience, which is fine. Uh, I mean, sometimes you extrapolate based upon your experience. You kind of, or, or you have uh, knowledge of what other people are saying and you use that as information. That's perfectly valid to do that, but... I don't know where he's getting this thirty thousand dollars to do a consultation, um, and and you're going to be a consultant. That's that's pretty low ball. Uh, maybe if it's a consultant that is, you know, got several different clients that they're working with, um, kind of in an integrated way, so they're not like dedicating their whole day towards one client, but they're rather you know trying to spread it out amongst all these different teams. But that's not going to be a very effective con consultant, in my opinion. In order to do proper consulting, you need to be deeply involved, basically for the entire process for a, a an extended period of time. You have to instill some sort. You have to take whatever the practices are, and you have to train the team on those new practices, and then you have to, for at least double the amount of time it took you to train them, at least twice that amount of time to ensure that they're actually implementing them in the system and you are constantly course correcting them during that time. You're, you're, you're letting them g use the new practices. You don't just like teach them on the new practices and said, okay, off you go. I'm done as a consultant. Um, no, that's not going to be effective training. You actually have to train them and then you have to let them practice it a lot. Like it should be about twice as long as the actual instructional phase. So, and trust me, like, this is what I do. This is, this is my job. This is, so I'm a consultant. I work for a consulting company. That's what the enterprise side of this does. Uh, we go in and we train new t techniques, new things like agile, like extreme programming. And then you have to sit there and actually watch and work with the team to ensure that they are on the right track with things. You can't just put in some sort of system and then, okay, there we go because inevitably the team is going to backslide back into the old habits and not use the practice or they're not gonna know how to use the practice effectively, right? And that's the problem. So um, again, I don't know really where he's getting this $30,000 consultation thing. 
uh, that's definitely not what we charge. Um, and and if if a consultant like if I was a consultant just running off of my own to do this, I thirty thousand um, dollars for the amount of time it would take for me to actually be there on site and do the work that I would need to do. It just wouldn't. Uh, like I might be able to go train for that amount for a few weeks, but that would be it. I, I wouldn't be able to sit there and actually ensure that the process is actually in place and working in their environment and, and continuing to, 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 you know, propagate throughout their process. Uh, I would only go like teach them and then leave. And that's, that's not really effective training. Okay. Up to speed the same way how Google does it. And then this little company comes and signs up and it's like, cool. So they sign up to all this stuff. They sign up to about $50,000 a month of, uh, Alassian, uh, products. And then they're like, did we really need this a year, two years from now? Uh, I would actually agree with that. Like you don't need expensive tools in order to be agile. You don't, you, uh, you could pr- like you could run an agile team with just the free tools that are available on GitHub. You could. You don't need. I mean, there's a ton of free tools out there. There's uh, one that I just came across for doing retrospectives, like retrospective-dashboard.org. Fantastic little tool. It's got some bugs to it, but it works beautifully for doing retros. Uh, so it's free. Why not use it? Why not do it? You know. Um, there's you can do a Kanban board with what they call it a project board on GitHub, but essentially it's a Kanban board that you can use in order to track your, your backlog and your, your user stories and the issue tickets. Like it's all free. You don't need Atlassian. You don't need Jira. You can use those tools. Cause there's a lot of good, neat, nice things that come along with Jira. There's a lot of cool integration stuff that comes with it, but you don't need to spend a whole bunch of money to be an agile team, especially if you're small. Uh, try to find those free tools. So I, I, I actually agree with that. But again, that has nothing to do with Agile. That has to do with the consultation industry, right? Uh, what his complaint is, is about the consultation industry, not about Agile as a process. Or, well, again, Agile is not a process. Agile as a, what did, he, what did he call a methodology? It's, again, a manifesto. Methodology is yeah, kind of, it's a value system. That's what Agile is. It's a value system, right? That, that's really what it's, again, similar in, in some respects to religion, okay? In, in just religion in general, right? That we hold these values and we're going to have principles associated with those values. And we put into practice some, or we do certain things in practice in our lives uh, that hopefully adhere to those pr- principles and those values. So it's, it's kind of, I, I, I hate making the comparison of a religion, but it's probably the most closely related uh, universal thing that I think that we all have had some sort of experience with. Um, and that it's, again, it's just a set of values and principles that we try to adhold, behold ourselves to. Uh, and we should use them as like these guardrails to help us stay on the track of what is right, what is good. Uh, that's what agile is. It's a set of values and principles that if you follow them, you, you know, they're, they're things that we say that we hold as valuable for developers and we should have practices that adhere to those things. Uh, so anyway, again, his criticisms here have been waterfall, uh, and consultation industry. They're not anything to do with agile. They're like, yo, do we really need this? Do we just spend all this money for no reason? And it's like, yeah. You so you wasted money. There was really no point of signing up to this whole agile thing. Like, you don't need it. Just get people to work, get things done. That's it. How do you do that? Does it just magically manifest itself that people just magically do the work? How do you... Again, <laughs> how does this solve the the main problem that at least what it looked like the article was saying is that you're still not able to properly target a time frame for when the software is is uh is delivered how does his statement of well just get to work on it how does that actually solve the problem 
Um, I think most agile developers would agree. Like, we just want to get to work. We just want to do these things. We don't want to do a bunch of meetings. And agile is all about saying, I'm not attending meetings. I'm not going to go do those things. Those things slow down my progress. Those things slow down my velocity. Those things as a team, we cannot complete all of our work because we're doing all of these practices that are anti-agile. That's what agile gives you. It gives you the ability to say no. No, we're not going to do that because we have certain values. We have principles as developers that we're not going to break because we know that it's going to create crap software and it's not going to be uh, beneficial to the client for us to do those terrible practices. That's what Agile gives you is the freedom to be able to say no to things. So, okay, let's keep moving on. That's simple. It doesn't take that much for people to, to understand what their job's supposed to be. But sometimes people want to make something that's easy and, and simple complicated to make it seem as if it's like, this is work. I got news for you. I don't, I, again, I don't know your actual, what's his name, John? I got news for you. Software development is complex, especially when you're dealing with large teams. Software development is extremely difficult to manage. Um, <clears throat> it's one of the hardest things to do in this industry is to manage large projects, large scale projects, especially ones that have um, that have growth potential. The ones that are going to explode, the, the ones that you don't even know whether or not they're going to take off uh, or what's going to be useful. And, um, you know, you suddenly have to scale it out. That's hard. That's a really, really hard thing to do. You can't just go do it. Um, I think when you're first learning about software, that's the kind of impression you have is I could just get to work. I could just do this stuff. Just give me the, the list of tasks I got to do and let me just go do them. And the actual management of the team and of the project doesn't necessarily enter your head until you've had a lot of stressful situations for delivery, right? Until you've had a lot of stressful interactions with customers because you didn't deliver. Um, until you have to la manage large scale teams. Like we're talking, you know, 50, 100, 200 developers on different on a variety of different projects. And, and they all have to kind of work together. When you start dealing with those type scale of people, just go do it. Just go work. Just go create software. I'm sorry, that's not possible. You have to have, I wouldn't say a plan. You have to have a loosely determined plan, but you have to have some way of working. Right? You have to have some idea of how to work as a team. And what are the things that you are going to hold each other accountable for? You can't just go do the work. You have to actually, okay, what are you going to work on? What are you going to work on? What are you going to work on? Right? You have to have kind of, it's again, it's not a full all out, let's scale out this whole plan. We're going to have this delivery date. We're going to do this by this time and that by that time. You don't do that. It's not down to the minu minutia of the project. But you do need to say like, okay, what is the product that we want to build? What are some of the features that we want to include in it? And who is our target audience? And then, okay, how are we going to break out our team? So why don't you focus more on this set of stories? And you, that team, you work on that set of stories. And you know what? Let's actually build this out as a separate project. Or let's have you guys work on, on breaking out into this service. And you guys work on that service. And you guys work on that service. Like you can break out teams and have a plan in terms of that of how you will work together as a team, but you don't plan the entire project, right? All the way down to the idiot bittiest little task because that's gonna take you forever and that's over, over planning. Um, so again, I, I don't know that this guy has a whole ton of experience with managing teams and that's fine. You know, again, people can have opinions and not have experience. That's, I'm fine with that, but just know that uh, I think that the experience of of people who have actually been in this industry and know what it's what it is to manage teams, uh, knows that this guy probably doesn't really quite have the experience that he should. To I shouldn't say should, but doesn't really have the experience that a lot of other people have, right? And and really knows how to talk about it. We gotta make it as complicated as we can. You know what I mean? It's like somebody who, you know, it's like it, it's like some developers too. Like when they do something, like they see something that's easy. 
and they're like wait we can make this smarter how can we make this one line uh, code make it into uh, a 35 line code because we want to make it more efficient than the efficient that's absolutely true and and that's one of the things about like test driven development and clean code is uh, you should do the simplest possible thing right the simplest possible implementation until you until the implementations or the the uh, the user stories or the use cases determine that that particular piece of code needs to be expanded and more generic. So that's perfectly valid, but again, nothing to do with Agile. Wait, what? You want to make it more efficient than something that was already efficient? Like it, it was already good and you want to make it more efficient than what it was to save, uh, you know, 500 milliseconds or something like that. <laughs> That actually can be a concern. Uh, the speed of, of delivery, depending upon a, which process. So if it's just a general, like something like, uh, like a browser rendering might, if, if you're not rendering a whole bunch of frames, you know, and you're just doing very small animations or something like that, or you just have, uh, you know, color changes or color schemes or some very small little thing, yeah, that that's probably a valid concern. But also, if you are doing a repeat, if you're doing a routine repetitively, 500 milliseconds could be a world of money to a business, right? That that translates into thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars over the course of time and iteration. So, um, yeah, sometimes that type of refactoring is important to do. You know what I mean, like. You start thinking, I'm like, wait, what? Like, if it works, it works. Leave it alone. Let's get work done and let's keep on moving. I've seen this done plenty of times. You know, developers are also guilty of situations like that. But the owners, man, I'm telling you guys right now, they sign up to all of these this, uh, companies because they don't even know anything. Like, a lot of these guys, they, you know, they go on, on, uh, on LinkedIn, they signed up for groups. They signed up for groups. They signed up for, uh, you know, little teams. And they really think like they know stuff. And it's like, bro, you have to be part of the community. You have to understand how the whole process of coding is, how it works, how how long it's going to take. You know, that's one of the things that I hate the most when people come in. How long would it take? And you're like, we have to do it. We have to get in there and start working on it. And then let me figure it out and tell you how far we are by the end of the day. <laughs> Uh, you just described agile. <laughs> like <laughs> you just described agile. Let's let's work on things in some some increments of like a week or two weeks and and then at the end of each one we kind of determine how much work we're able to get done within that period of time. And then if we do it enough times, if we have enough iterations, we can get some sort of measurable increment of how much work is actually done. And then once we have that measurement, we can finally tell you about where we're about the average, kind of the, it's volatility, velocity type of thing. We, it's going to be somewhere projected within here and there that this is going to get done. That's what agile is all about. That's what, uh, you know, extreme programming is all about. That's, that's, what Scrum is even all about, right? Is having these iterations, track your velocity, see how much work is get, getting done, do some retrospectives to try to determine if there's any way that you can possibly, uh, you know, streamline the process and get rid of the bottlenecks. Like that's that's what Agile is all about. So you're basically just now saying, this is how we should work and you're describing Agile in a video about how agile is broken and it's a waste of time. <laughs> you can't make this type of disinformation up, can you? Uh, it just it just exists. No, but can you give me like a, a direct direct uh, time like, you know, a, a good estimate. Is it going to take 2 days, 3 days, 1 week? I have to get in there and see how long it's going to take. I've never done it right. before. That's like, right. Oh, there must be a way to estimate this. And it's like, bro, this is not, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and that's the same type of people that signed up to, to Agile, man. And G. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Um, 
I'm just going to let all of that stand on its own. I, I have no reason to comment on that. Right. All this other stuff. Like, man, what a waste of time, man. But that's why I wanted to make this video, man. Somebody out there, whoever has done this, who, who has done uh, Agile before, knows what the hell I'm talking about. Yes, it can get done. Uh, it can work some in some cases with minimum, uh, you know, minimum checks and balances. That's the thing. Because the problem is when now, if everybody has the power to veto things and be like, oh, this, can we go back to the drawing board and redo this or whatever? Like now it's like waiting on waiting on waiting on waiting on waiting. It's like a meeting for a meeting to get the meeting. It's like. Let's get an approval for the approval just to get the approval. Like, again, he's describing Waterfall. He's not describing Agile. He's describing a type of Waterfall in a video about how Agile is a waste of time and money. What this really should be is a video on why Waterfall is a waste of time and money for companies. That's what this video should really be titled. And everywhere where he said Agile should have been replaced with the word Waterfall. And this video would have been probably much, much closer to being true. Like, that's what happens all the time. People that have done Agile, y'all know what I'm talking about. And come to my website, man. Check the description below right there, right now. If you're looking to Promo learn time. web development, you're looking to learn programming in general, Listen, you're going to get 50% off on all my courses uh, automatically. Uh, I have plugging. A okay, I'll let him plug based, it. Which pretty much says, hey, for the price of one, you get everything unlimited for the whole month. Ooh. Okay? Why wouldn't you want to do this? We got, you know. Don't you want to learn from him? OGS, we got I don't, bl I don't blame him for CSS. trying to capitalize on his uh, internet stuff. Because, you know, I got my own channel and I, I'm, you know, I'm trying to make like, you know, um, I'm trying to make some money off of it too. I'm not going... I don't have a whole set of courses for people to take and go pay for. Um, but I, I applaud his enthusiasm to do so. And I, I, I'm glad he's trying to do it. And by all means, I'll, I'll let him plug his, his stuff. And he's more than welcome to, uh, you know, uh, he's, he's, you're welcome to go check out his videos and, and check out his stuff. Uh, again, I'll, I'll post, I'll, I'll show you his uh, handle here. So coding phase. So look up coding phase on YouTube here. Again, he has about the same number of subscribers I do on my on my main channel. Um, go go check him out if you really want to. Uh, his video is about a third of the people say it's wrong. Um, I'll probably thumbs down it too because I don't like giving thumbs down without giving some sort of feedback on things. But yeah, it's it's not exactly. I, I think he's really off on a lot of points. Um, but let's go ahead and let him continue to plug on my channel. Uh, for his stuff we got pug template engine we have jquery oh my god the new jquery course is legit guys oh jquery go check it out we got science nice. we got terminal for developers what is it now we got building a responsive is it, is it web 2016 app. We got now future proof javascript 20, ES6, 2013 ES7, is that ES8. what year are we in 2013 javascript framework hyper app we got laravel like a boss we got uh, let's build uh, Instagram clone. All of those courses are actually free. Ooh, Instagram clone. You can clone. come here and sign up and just. I don't much do those. Free. Anybody that wants to come take it, come take it. All right, guys. But yeah, man, love you guys. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you come check out the website. That's the only way to support your boy. And yeah, see you guys later. Bow. Yeah, hey, go support him. I, hey, go ahead. I mean, I, I'm all for the community. I'm, I'm all for, uh, you know, if you guys want to go check him out, go ahead. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, but I, I think he really needs to actually read this sometime, actually read the agile manifesto and, uh, you know, go, go try to understand it's, it's implications of value of, you know, these are our values, right? These are the things that we have come to value. And then here are the 12 principles, which really just kind of expand upon those values and, um, you know, give a little bit more fine detail to these things. That's what we should really be focusing on is, is the values and the principles. All right. So, um, look, I, I, again, I applaud what this guy's trying to do. Um, I, I appreciate dissenting voices. I appreciate, 
I appreciate anybody who tries to stand up against the prevailing um, belief system that the, that any times we can kind of come up with, hey, uh, I don't agree with everybody else because of these reasons. Um, I think that he is sadly misunderstanding what agile is all about and how it uh, how it actually I wouldn't say works, but how it should be um, leveraged in your teams. And uh, I hope that this guy, I wish him nothing but success. And again, go check him out. Go check out his website or his, uh, you know, his YouTube channel and all that good stuff. But honestly, uh, I think his analysis of Agile and his analysis of the practices are way off base. Um, maybe with a little bit more experience with various teams or in the development world, uh, he might come to a different conclusion. And maybe he'll be able to form some better arguments against Agile. But I think that uh, overall, his his video is going to get a thumbs down from me. I just can't I, I can't say that I approve. So uh, thanks so much for watching this one. If you guys have anything that you want to bring up, if you have another like video you want me to analyze, you want me to go through, and it doesn't have to be a dissenting one. It could be a positive one. It could be uh, you know something that you agree with or you think I would agree with. Uh, feel free to drop that into you know my my comments here, and you know I might give it a review. It might be worth doing. So, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you guys learned something out of this. Um, please drop a comment, drop a like. Let me know what you think. Okay. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. You have a great rest of your week. Bye bye.